This is Daniel Daly here. This is a Noahide sermon. The seven laws of Noah create a false history. The seven laws of Noah create a false history. Now I want to start first of all with the Advancing Noah Movement. Noahide Videos Bible, this channel. We're car right. I don't say things about history, religious history, biblical religious history, or the history of Torah in the world, which aren't biblical. My faith is Karite, it's Tanakh, the Old Testament in Christianity. That's the basis of our interpretation of history in the advancing movement. Not the only basis. The old sacred literature, ancient literature, for the most part, I guess, probably before the Common Era. Um, I think, I suppose, the New Testament, uh, in a sense, sort of like, that's when the Common Era begins, the Christian Era. The Common Era calendar, the Christian Era calendar, the AD calendar, as it were. It's the same calendar dating, same number of years. And in a sense, that's sort of like the modern era, I suppose, of a common era. It's like an update to things. I mean, the church, when it got going, really sort of got Europe going in a, in a, in a major way. And Europe sort of produced a lot of, a lot of product, a lot of literature. Now, this was going on in the rest of the world as well. As well. Don't get me wrong. China was doing a lot, and so was Japan, and all, all the cultures of mankind were doing quite a lot. Some were quite basic and not doing a huge amount of, the, of records and stuff. But after Jesus showed up and pushed his gospel idea and sort of, with his passion, sort of promoted things, the world got going quite a lot more on, on record keeping and things like that. A lot of the world got going. He influenced people to get him going. But before the New Testament sort of came around, or the early gospel ideas, in terms of what we have extant, still existing in ancient literature, if you go off to Wikipedia, you go to Google search engine and type ancient literature wiki, W-I-K-I, and you find the, uh, the article on ancient literature, you get the, the, the texts of the ancient literature before the common era. There's not that many. The records we have of ancient history, it's not that much. A few hundred. It's not that many books. Not that many records. So, as a, as a, as a car ride, the Bible history is pretty fundamental, but it's not the only history. There are other ancient records, but there's not much to draw upon. But when it comes to Karite faith and the history of Adam through to Noah, the Bible teaches us all we've really got solid records on. But when it comes to these seven laws of Noah, from the Talmud, the Orthodox tradition, the Pharisaical tradition, they're making up history. They're inventing a code which is really just a practical application of early Genesis. It's a way of interpreting and applying it. But they're trying to pass it off as the genuine history of Adam through to Noah. This, this they tried to do with the Mishnah and the Gemaras, the Babylonian Gemara and the Palestinian, Palestinian Gemara, which with the Mishnah, the old law, forms the overall Talmud, the teaching of the Pharisees. But it's not historical. When you study study early Genesis from creation to the Tower of Babel from Genesis 1 to Genesis 11 long enough, when, when you've studied that, those early chapters a good few, few hundred times even, you start to get a sense of the history. And when you know your Tanakh well, when you know your Bible well, when you start, if someone refers you to some quotes from Talmud and things, you know, it's like when I first started with Noahide faith, Okay, seven laws of Noah, I suppose so. Buy myself an art scroll, Tanakh. Order, order a few from, I think, Gold's Book Soils, possibly Melbourne, maybe Sydney. I think it was Melbourne I got them from. 
And I'm looking at these quotes down in the, the commentary section of the, the, the Bible, the I scroll to Narcs, about what, what was going on. <laughs> Not biblical. And it's, I, I noticed pretty quickly how unbiblical and out of harmony these Talmud quotes were with Scripture. They're very out of harmony, a lot of them. Not everything, but a lot of it, it's like, I'm making that up. It's a fantasy that, that the, the Talmuds were involved with. Sort of like wishful thinking a lot of time, I think, on some things. Wouldn't that be wonderful if that was historical? I made a story up. It's not true. It's not historical. It's not biblical. The Bible came before the Talmudic literature and it's more reliable for the early records. It's probably not perfect. I'm one of the first to admit that. It's probably not a perfect rendition of history. But the Talmud and dodgy bickies on the Noahide faith. Dodgy bickies on Karak Judaism, on Judaism when it comes right down to it. The Bible's the record, and it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's like Michael Dallin, the author of the Rainbow Covenant, a Jewish man, once said to me, you know, it's pretty dumb to think God gave us gave us some rules and didn't give us an interpretation of it. But it's, it's to me, what what something like that, he, he, he wrote to me on a, on a website or something, on a comment or something, but it's like... Here's a, uh, a computer or something, or something which has an instruction manual. It's like, here's a computer. This is the instruction manual. Or he, here's, here's a TV. Here's the instruction manual how to use it. Or a VCR. A, a DVD player. Here's the instruction manual on to, uh, how to use it. And it's, it's like with a Talmud saying, but you need an instruction manual to interpret the instruction manual. See how dumb that is. He needs an instruction manual to understand the instruction manual. And then as they go on, they need a rabbi, which is a qualified teacher of it, to give people instruction on how to interpret the instruction manual, which interprets the instruction manual. You, know, you need the rabbi to interpret the Talmud to interpret the Bible. An instruction, instructor to instruct you on the instruction manual, which gives you instructions on the instruction manual. See, it's ridiculous. It's ludicrous nonsense. Charism is based on the plain meaning of a text. It doesn't take a genius to work out what the Bible is saying. But the rabbis and the orthodox and the Pharisees are lost in their airy fairy world where they worship Maimonides, the Rambats, the Rambam, and Rashi, and so forth, and <laughs> it's not historical, these seven laws of Noah tradition. It's an old tradition. It's a well-established movement now, the, the Talmudic Noah movement. But it's not biblical, and it's not historical, and it misrepresents the original Noahide faith. 